All right, friends, here we go. Another lesson with reading with Miss Hoglum. This is going to be a vowel, consonant, consonant, vowel um, story. We are looking for this pattern, vowel, consonant, consonant, vowel. When we see those two consonants in the middle, we get our hot karate chopper out and go hi -ya! We chop it apart, and that tells us what sound our vowels are going to make. You have to, have to, have to know what your vowels are in order to be able to do this. So we got A, E, I, O, U, and Y, as long as it's not at the beginning of a syllable. So A is going to say A, A, A for schwa, if it's at the beginning sometimes, and then A, if it's A, U, A, L, A, W. E is going to say E, E, I is going to say I, I, O is going to say A, O. U is going to say uh, U, and Y as a vowel is going to say I, I, E, I, I, E. All right, here we go, friends. We are going to work on story Melvin and the, Melvin the Mandrel. Melvin the Mandrel. Now, I've already written the words down for time's sake, so if you want to write these words down, you can go ahead and pause the video now, and then you can write these words down. Or you can just continue to follow along with me and tell me where to split them at. All right, so the first thing we're always going to look for is we're going to look for vowels. We are always going to dot and circle our vowels. And that will help us see this vowel, constant, constant vowel pattern. All right, so the very first word, I've got a capital letter, so I know it's going to be a name. Okay, names don't always follow patterns, but we're going to give it a shot. Here we go. So we got an E, we'll circle it, and then we got an I, we're going to circle it, and I've got two consonants right in the middle, so this is going to follow that pattern, so I'm going to split it, and I have the closed syllable right here, the close, I know it's a closed syllable because it ends in a consonant, that means that vowel cannot say its name unless there's an N there, so it's M, eh. Mel, and then if we look at the second part of it, that is also a closed syllable. So this I is going to say I, but it, there's an N after it, so we're not sure what it's going to say, but we're going to try I, okay? So if we have Melvin, have you ever heard of the name Melvin before? I have, so yep, this one's working, Melvin. We're going to go straight over to this word over here. Now, we, I, typically circle. Um, digraphs or sounds that make or letters combinations that make brand new sounds unless it's a vowel um, because that way I'm recognizing I can never split those in this instance I can never split this TH so then I have an I I'm going to circle it then I see a CK and an E where do you think I'm going to split it I've got vowel constant constant vowel right in the middle right here so we got thick kit, thicket. A thicket, close syllable, close syllable. A thicket is kind of like a patch of briars, okay? Stickers. Here's the next word, okay? We have vowel. Vowel. Uh-oh, this one has vowel, consonant, consonant, consonant vowel. It has three consonants in the middle. So I have to decide, this is going to, it's not going to, if I do this right here, it's going to be may, because that's an open syllable, ndrl, ndrl. Well, ndr is not a letter, letter, letter combination. dr is a letter combination. So I'm going to say if I do this, a man, and I split it right here, and then I have dr, dr, which is a blend. I, oh, this is that floss rule. It is why this L is doubled right here. That's why the L is doubled. You only hear one L sound there. And the floss rule is um, if it ends in an F, ends in an L, ends in an S, or ends in a Z, you're going to double it if it comes after a short vowel sound. And this is a short vowel, so we're going to double this L. Mandrel. Okay, we'll have to find out what a mandrel is in our story. Here we go. Next word, we got a vowel. Then we got another vowel. And then 
I see a blend right here. Okay, so we got vowel, consonant, consonant, vowel. So what are we gonna do? Aya! So this is a closed syllable, short vowel, but it is an N, so you gotta be careful. N, then this is another closed syllable because it has a CT after it. So it's gonna be its short vowel sound. So this word is insect. What word? Insect. Can you name an insect? Some type of bug, all right? The next word is actually a compound word, and you should probably know this one already just because it is a sight word. It's a word that we would see often, okay? You look at this, we got vowel, constant, consonant vowel. We're gonna split it, and it works. So we've got I, M, S, E, F, himself. Did you get that one? The next one, we have a vowel, vowel, Okay, constant, constant, split it. So now we got closed syllable because of the N. It's closing the U in there. Sun, lit, sunlit. Okay, the next word, we've got vowel, vowel. See why it's really important? You have to know your vowels here. So then we have a vowel, constant, constant, vowel. Hiya! Split it right in the middle. So we got mass, mask, ought, mascot. Our mascot is an Oriole. Here we go. The next word, we got a vowel. We got another vowel way over here. And look at this. We have vowel, consonant, 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 vowel. But I know that full is a suffix. Okay, I know that this is a suffix. It's part I can add on to the end of a word. So we have wistful, wistful. We'll have to see how wistful is how it wistful is used. So we got wistful, we want to know what it is, and we want to know what a mandrel is, okay, as we're reading the story. The next word, d, we got a vowel, and another vowel. Where's our consonants? Two in the middle split them. They're both closed syllables because the I is trapped by the S and the A is trapped by the L. So this is short vowel. Dis mall. This one right here is not going to say apple, apple, dismal. Nope. A L, A U, or A W makes the short aw sound. Dismal, dismal, dismal. You really don't hear it a lot. Ah, maybe. Okay, dismal. Dismal, don't have a very good outlook on it. It might be kind of gloomy. The next word, got a vowel. Got a vowel. And we got two consonants in the middle. We're going to split it. What's this word? P ick. Pick -ick. Nick. Picnic. Good job. Here we go. Next one right here. We have k. We got a vowel, and we got a vowel right here. Okay, we got the two consonants in the middle. Split it. K -n -con -fess. Confess. Actually, this O is making the schwa sound. That's the symbol for a schwa, and it makes the short U sound. K -n Confess. Confess. I wonder if you've ever had to confess to something before. All right. And the last word we have right here, we have a vowel, and we have a vowel, and here's our two consonants in the middle, so we're gonna split it. We got k at, and the second part, nap, nap, cat nap. Okay, a quick little nap. All right, kind of makes sense. So we have Melvin, mandrel, himself, mascot, dismal, picnic, confess, cat nap, Thicket, insect, sunlit, and wistful. Now, if I was to pronounce these words incorrectly, like say this word himself, if I did not split this word correctly, let's say I split it like that, then it would be hymns elf. Hymns elf? Hymns elf? Is that what it is? That's not right. Well, what if I split it like right here? Then it'd be high, because this is an open syllable. It'd be high, m, m, self. High, m, self. 
So it makes a big difference on where you split these words. That's why we split it right in between the consonant vowel, consonant, consonant vowel. So you can always have your eyes out for that pattern. All right, here we go. Our story, Melvin the Mandrel. Melvin the Mandrel. Remember, there's a couple words we were looking for to try to figure out what those words meant. And it was wistful mandrel. Okay, and you're probably going to want to see dismal as well. Melvin the Mandrel. Melvin the Mandrel sighed to himself. If I look at this word right here, the I G H makes the long I sound. Okay. Melvin the Mandrel sighed to himself. It was hard to be the mascot for all the apes in the zoo. What? He was the mascot for all the apes in the zoo? It's telling us what a mandrel is so far. So mandrel. What was he? He was a mascot. Who was he mascot for? The apes. So we're going to have to see if that follows through. It was hard to be the mascot for all the apes in the zoo. He was dismal from lack of sleep. That word dismal. Dismal. Um, you're so tired you don't even know what you're thinking. As the mascot, Melvin had to be up at the crack of dawn to greet those coming to the zoo each day. It was no picnic for Melvin. He had a hard job to do. The zoo looked to Melvin to be a mascot who could make the young kids laugh. Hmm, I'm wondering, would you put an ape with a bunch of kids? Ooh, I'm kind of got a question here. Okay, I'm kind of questioning this. Melvin had to confess. He wished he could take a cat nap in the thicket and pick up an insect or two off the sunlit grass. Well, that kind of makes him sound like he's an ape, doesn't it? Because would a human pick up an insect or two off the sunlit grass and take a nap in the bushes? I don't know. He wished he could be wistful like his ape friends. Wistful, he doesn't have a care. No care. Doesn't have a care in the world. His friends were glad Melvin was their mascot. Melvin did a great job. He could hide how dismal he was. Melvin made the young kids laugh and the zoo a great place to be. Okay, I don't know that we actually really know what the, what the mandrel was. I think a mandrel, I might have to look up the word mandrel for you again. Because I don't know that we can exactly get the word mandrel from there. I'm kind of thinking it's an ape. But we will have to see. Define... Mandrel. Sometimes we, it's the largest West African baboon with brightly colored red and blue face. Wow. Okay, so he is kind of like an ape, but he's a baboon. All right, now notice Miss Hoagland read it kind of mechan mechanical, which means I read it word by word. I want you to notice how we're going to push all the way to the period, okay? So, my goal is to read this all the way to this period like I mean it, okay? Melvin the mandrel sighed to himself. I might have to practice that a couple times. It was hard to be the mascot for all the apes in the zoo. Notice how I pushed all the way to that period. He was dismal from lack of sleep. Next period is all the way down here. We got a long ways to go, kids. Here we go. As the mascot, Melvin had to be up at the crack of dawn to greet those coming to the zoo each day. Notice how I pushed. I got that hole out there, but I still had fluctuation in my voice. It still went up and down. Next period. It was no picnic for Melvin. Oops, right here. He had a hard job to do. Here's next period. The zoo looked to Melvin to be a mascot who could make the young kids laugh. All right, here we go. Short sentence here. Melvin had to confess. 
He wished, we're going to go all the way down to right here. He wished he could take a cat nap in the thicket and pick up an insect or two off the sunlit grass. He wants a snack, doesn't he? Period right here. He wished he could be wistful like his eight friends. Here's our period. His friends were glad Melvin was their mascot. Right here. Melvin did a good job. Right here. He could hide how dismal he was or sad. Okay, this one. Melvin made the young kids laugh and the zoo a great place to be. Now, I showed you how to push through each sentence. Now I'm going to show you how to push the sentences into each other and we're going to make it into a whole story. Okay? Melvin the mandrel. Melvin the mandrel sighed to himself. It was hard to be the mascot for all the apes in the zoo. He was dismal from lack of sleep. As the mascot, Melvin had to be up at the crack of dawn to greet those coming to the zoo each day. It was no picnic for Melvin. He had a hard job to do. The zoo looked to Melvin to be a mascot who could make the young kids laugh. Melvin had to confess. He wished he could take a cat nap in the thicket and pick up an insect or two off the sunlit grass. He wished he could be wistful like his eight friends. His friends were glad Melvin was their mascot. Melvin did a good job. He could hide how dismal he was. Melvin made the young kids laugh and the zoo a great place to be. Good job, my friends. If you have a little bit of time and you want to practice reading a little bit more, you can just put it on pause and you can try to read it again. But it takes practice to be a good reader, just like you would practice with dance or football or anything else. You put lots of hours of practice in it, so we have to practice being a good reader too. All right. Love you guys. Talk to you later.